Hi, I'm Tony from Humpop Gaming. Have you ever tried to learn object-oriented programming and you just didn't get it? Or you're completely new to ORP? Then this video is for you. We'll cover what it is, why you should use it, and how to implement it in Lua. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you some bonus information, so make sure you stick around to the end so you don't miss anything. Now, I'm going to assume that you know the very basics of Lua. If you don't, I've added a great video in the description below. So, what is ORP? Well, it's a concept. It's not restricted to a programming language, it's a style of programming. Other styles include imperative, procedural, functional and declarative. But ORP is different because it treats everything as an object. These objects can be related to real world objects like cars, bites, house, dog, bin, rock, island. They can be anything, but all the objects are based on four core concepts, encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance and polymorphism. Now, they sound like big scary words, but encapsulation is just making sure the class has everything it needs, no more, no less. Think of a tablet, a little capsule. It has everything needed to treat a specific problem. That's encapsulation. An abstraction, that's just a fancy word of saying hide the complex detail. So for example, think about when you pay for something. You press the pay button and you've made a payment. But in the background, a connection's made to the bank, security checks are made, a check's made that you have the money, other checks are made, the bank balance is updated for you, and the bank balance is updated for the seller. But you only have to worry about pressing the pay button. That's abstraction. Inheritance gives us the ability to reuse our code by creating a parent and child relationship between our classes. This means that the child class can have access to everything that's in the parent class. And we'll see that in action later in this video. And finally, there's polymorphism. Now, this is just a fancy word, which means you can use a more general term to refer to a specific object. So for example, instead of saying, I've got a new chihuahua, I could simply say, we've got a new dog. You don't have to specify exactly what type of dog. People will know that you have a fairy little friend that barks and wags its tail. As we write the code, I'll refer back to these core concepts to help you understand what they look like in code. For us to be able to use an object, we have to create a class. A class is the blueprint for how the object can be used. It's made up of functions and properties. Now, functions are the things that it can do, and properties are the things that belong to it. So for example, if I'd made a person class, I could have a function of walk. That's something a person can do. Whereas it could have a property of name, because that's something that belongs to the person. Now, let's look at an example. What we'll do is create a Ferrari class. I'm going to make this a module script and place it in server script service. I'm creating this as a module script so I can reuse it later. We'll start by setting the local variable Ferrari, and this is set to an empty table. It's going to act as the blueprint for creating our Ferrari object. Next, let's add the property index and set that to Ferrari. Now, this sets up the meta table mechanism, which allows us to use an OOP style syntax in Lua. If you want more detail on this, I've added another video in the description below. Now we create our first function, which is new. This is a common pattern which creates a new instance of an object. In here, we define a variable called self and add the Ferrari to the meta table. Now this sets up the meta table for our Ferrari. We return the instance of the new object so the caller can use it. And this return statement down here just makes it accessible so other scripts can use it when they import this module. When we've got this in place, we can add some properties to our class. So here I'm adding model, making that an F8, adding the number of doors, we'll set that to four for now. We can have a color and it can have an engine type. So now our class has a number of properties in place, we can also give it some functions. Remember, the properties are the things that belong to the class and the functions are the things that the class can do. So the first function I add is drive. But for now, I'm just gonna to print to the console when this function is called. Next, we add break and do the same. And finally, we add turn. In this last method, 
I added a parameter which we can use. So now we're going to add another script to the server script service. And we're going to require the Ferrari module. We make a new instance of the Ferrari. Now we have access to everything that the Ferrari can do. So I call drive and then immediately call break. So we can now run the script and we can see that the F8 is now driving and the F8 is now breaking. What we've done here is make one of the core concepts of OOP, encapsulation. All the functionality related to the Ferrari is within that class. So encapsulation is simply hiding the internal state and requires all interactions to be performed through a well-defined interface. But what if we wanted to make a different car? With our current setup, it won't be so easy. So let's refactor our code so we can have a Porsche. Now, what I could do is duplicate this file, rename it, then do the same in here, change the model to a 911, we'll say green, and I'll pick a random number to make it a different engine type. So now we have our Porsche, but the code has been duplicated. So if you were to make any changes in the future, that means you have to change in two places. But as your application grows, this means you've got a maintenance overhead. If you continue to do this, you'll find you get potentially inconsistent behavior. It'll be difficult to refactor the code, so it'll be difficult to change it in the future. It'll be hard to read. You've got increased risk of bugs. You're violating a principle called dry, which is don't repeat yourself. It's not scalable. It's reduced the reusability. It makes it more difficult to keep track of what's happening in the code. That's referred to as increasing the cognitive load. It's hard to test and you lose abstraction. Or another way of saying that is you get a more rigid design. So let's avoid all these issues and make a class that will be the parent class to both the Ferrari and the Porsche. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete the Porsche class for now, and I'm going to change the Ferrari class. So instead of having a Ferrari, we now have a car. I'll also add a make in here and I'll set it to the variable make. This is going to be passed in in our constructor, but I'm also going to pass in model, number of doors, color, and engine type as well. And then we can assign these to each of the properties. So now we have our car class. It matches the Ferrari class with the addition of the make property, but it accepts all values as parameters. Let's now create a new Ferrari class so that it uses the car class. So I'm gonna create a new module script. I'm gonna put this module script as a child of the car. You don't have to do this, but it's just the way I like to organize my code. So the first thing we do is require the parent module, which in this case is the car class. Next, we create a local variable and set the meta table to the Ferrari. First parameter assigns an empty table like we did last time, but the second parameter sets the index property equal to the car. This means we now have access to all the functionality that is in the car. We then create our new instance, and instead of hard coding everything, this time we allow the caller to pass in the number of doors, the color of the car, and the engine. Now we assign self, so we create the new instance of our car and pass in the make as Ferrari, the model as F8, the number of doors as four, but I should have passed that in as our parameter, number of doors, and the color as red. But once again, should have passed that in as our parameter, color. As I'm English, I'll use the English spelling. Now we return self so that anyone calling the new Ferrari gets access to it. And finally, we need to call the set meta table again. Now remember, I said this first one gives us access to the functionality that's found in car. This second one ensures that Lua will look into the Ferrari class for a method that's called on it before it then goes on to look into the car class. What we've done here is met another core concept of OOP, abstraction. The Ferrari doesn't need to know how to drive, brake or turn. The methods just work. Now we can add the Porsche much the same way as we did with the Ferrari and we'll have two different types of car in the game. Let's update the calling script to make use of the new car. So now we've got these in place, let's run our script and see what we get. We've got an error. Let's see what the problem is. Yeah, I can see here. I haven't added index for the Ferrari. So this index property is essential if we're going to be using object oriented programming. And we'll also need it for our Porsche. So let's try and run it again and see what we get. There we go, this is more what we was expecting. Ferrari's driving functionality is called, then it breaks, 
and then the Porsche's functionality is called Nip Brakes. Remember, Drive and Brake doesn't exist anywhere on Ferrari or Porsche. So now we have a single place where the logic lives and we're able to easily add as many cars as we like into our game. And in doing so, we've achieved another core concept of OOP, inheritance. But what if we wanted to give the Ferrari some functionality that the Porsche doesn't have? Fortunately, it's an easy solution. We can simply add the functionality into the specific class that we want to have access for it. So if we add this function into the Porsche and this function into the Ferrari, we're then able to call them from our main script and we can see that each method is called without any errors. In doing this, we've achieved the fourth core concept of OOP, polymorphism. Technically, we achieved polymorphism when we extended the car class and called Ferrari. But I feel this is a better example of what we can do with polymorphism. If you want this code, I have it for you on my GitHub account. I've put a link in the description below. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel and by doing it, it'll help me make more videos that cover more topics that you find interesting. So before we close out, when structuring your code, it's worth noting that inheritance is not always the best way to do it. In fact, you should prefer composition over inheritance. Composition over inheritance is its own subject. I've done a video on this and I've added a link in the description for you to check out. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.